Hello and welcome back to another Django project. So this project is called Chat Rooms and this is going to be an asynchronous project. So we're slowly moving to or into asynchronous communication or asynchronous development. So here we're going to develop an asynchronous chat room service using Django and the channels package. So there's going to be a, a fair bit of theory here and I want to build you up. I'm assuming that you have absolutely no knowledge about asynchronous um, communication or working in it or developing an asynchronous application. So we we'll go through this idea of web sockets, ASGI and channels, and I'll just build your knowledge and hopefully give you what you need to understand how simple in actual fact it is building these real real time kind of applications. So by the end of this tutorial, we will have a working code. So we will have a working chat room utilizing asynchronous development approaches. So that's what we're aiming for. So before we start, let's have a look at the project specifications. So the idea here is that I want to get your input. We're going to start this new project. I've no idea where it's going to go, um, but we're going to build a real life chat facility. Now you can obviously utilize these technologies in different ways, and I will start utilizing these technologies in the other projects that we're developing here in this channel. So we're going to create a live chat multi user chat room. Um, so potentially we're going to need to build in some user registration. We want to be able to track the conversation and users in the chat room, uh, maybe record and save conversations and then potentially then move on to allow users to delete their uh, messages or edit their messages that they've sent and then anything else that you can think of. So if you can think of any other good additions to this project, then please leave them in the comments. So let's get into the theory. So asynchronous and synchronous. So really this is a contextual thing. So if you started reading about asynchronous and synchronous, you could really fall into a, a trap because like I said, it can mean different things or have different contexts in, in different contexts. So let's think about Django and web application. So synchronous uh, or working in a synchronous way. Now, all you need to do is imagine the fact that you've gone to a web page and that web page is going to be utilizing HTTP requests to send a message to the server to collect the web page and return that web page to your browser. So there's a set process here. We send a message to the server HTTP request. Now, our application stops after it sends a request and it waits for a reply. We then get a reply from the, from the server that might be a HTTP 200 or 404, maybe there's a problem or potentially we've timed out. So we get a message back. Now it's important to understand that our application, our browser using HTTP is expecting a reply back and it waits for it before executing or doing anything else. So this is what I think of. This is how I try and describe working in a synchronous way. So we have to be synchronous. We have to send a message and we get a return. Then we send a message and then we get a return. So working in an asynchronous manner is slightly different. So here what happens in our browser, for example, is we send a request or we launch the request. And then what happens our browser, we just continue doing what we're doing. So there's no waiting for a reply here or no expectation for a reply. So here we forget about it. We carry on executing the task and then eventually we might then get a reply. Now, if you think about a chat room situation, situation, that's generally what happens. We send a message to the chat room. We can see it. Everyone else can see it, but we might not get a reply. And then someone eventually might say something. And then that then that information then gets sent back to us. So here we're working in real time. So asynchronous uh, working in an asynchronous way allows us to work in real time. We can receive messages whenever they might occur. Whereas with HTTP in a synchronous way, we're only going to receive the message when we actually make a request. So hopefully I'm not going too fast. I get a little bit excited and then start speeding up, start talking a little bit quicker. So this graph or this graphic here gives us a visual demonstration of what was happening or what I've just explained. We have user A maybe on a website, google.com, or makes a request to go to google.com. So that goes to the server, the web server. 
We then receive a message back from the web server saying, yep, fantastic, here's some data. We get some data back. But what we can't do here is that the server can't just send a message to user A. So obviously this is just repeating what I've already said, but we're just establishing the fact that in a synchronous manner, we actually have to send a request to get a reply in a synchronous environment. So this graph here, this graphic, sorry, here, just really, again, established what I've been saying. So in a chat room situation, user A wants to send a message. So they send the message to the server, the server picks it up, and then sends a reply saying, great, I've got the message. But user B, who is also in the chat room, they won't actually get the message. So the server can't send the message to B unless B actually requests from the server, is there any messages? And of course, here in this situation, if they're both in the same chat room, they'll both be refreshing the page to refresh and send a message to the server to see if there is a message or not that's been sent by any user. So this isn't the ideal situation to work. So what we want is a way of automatically forwarding any messages that were sent by user A or B to everyone else in the chat room. So our solution to this problem is utilizing WebSockets. So like HTTP, this is a web protocol running over TCP. WebSockets are gonna allow us to develop our chat room so that we create an asynchronous environment. So user A will be able to send a message to the WebSocket server, and then user B will get the reply instantly or anyone else in the chat room. So of course, this isn't contained to chat rooms. Any live or real time data that we want to collect can be served in this manner. So you can start thinking about well, how this could be useful potentially in your application, creating some sort of maybe push uh, service. So pushing messages to all users at a particular time, for example. Um, so you can start to see how this technology is becoming potentially more important or useful in the modern web environment. So just to go through some of the terminology of WebSockets or WS. So WebSockets are bi-directional, whereas HTTP is unidirectional. And these are both protocols that we can utilize over TCP. So the idea here is, you're probably getting the idea, the server and client can push messages at any time. So the WebSockets are considered full duplex communication meaning that the client and server can talk to each other independently at the same time. So this is all supported by um, all the modern browsers. So we don't really have to worry too much about compatibility. And then additionally, like HTTPS, if you're familiar with the secure version of HTTPS, then we also have with WS a secure version, which is known as WSS, secured WebSockets. So hopefully now we've established a baseline to understand this asynchronous communication that we're going to develop. If you do have any questions, by all means, just add them into the comment section and I'll gladly reply to them. So let's give you a general overview on how WebSockets work or how they're initiated in a web environment. So you can see from this situation, we have user A they might navigate to a web page that has WebSockets enabled. So we we'll start off with the HTTP request for that page. And we realize or we tell the server that we want to use WebSockets. So we simply just upgrade to WebSockets. So user A can still utilize HTTP requests as well as WebSockets, um, but we now have WebSockets enabled. So essentially what we've done now between the user and the server, we've created a record or we recognize the fact that user A is now or has a WebSocket session or channel available. So the server now knows that user A is WebSocket enabled and we now have this open persistent connection. The server knows when, where to send the data to, to user A if it wants to send some data and the user knows where to send the WebSocket data to the server. So we now have this open connection. So because we have this asynchronous connection, we want to be able to close it at some point. So user A can close it if they want to, or the server can close it. So once the um, channel is closed, we then have the fact that obviously the server just goes back to HTTP requests, 
and we don't have the capabilities of sending the message to user A and vice versa anymore. So in our chat room situation, obviously this is going to be really useful. So user A goes to our chat room and they're upgraded to WebSockets. They now have a, a connection to the server, a persistent connection. So we can now send messages if anyone else in the chat room sends the message to the chat room. And of course, this is just going to mirror user B and C. They build a or upgrade to WebSockets. And now we have three users in a chat room. The server knows um, about all these different users. So when someone sends a message, the server can then send that chat room message to all users. And of course, on the screen for all these users, those messages will appear in the chat room on the chat page. So moving a little bit deeper into the setup for WebSockets, we're probably familiar with this workflow here. We have HTTP requests from the user on a web page. That will go in Django through a WSG, a Web Server Gateway interface. So this is an interface for Python applications to handle requests. And that ends up in our Django URLs. And remember, that's then routed to our view. So that's a general kind of workflow, isn't it, for utilizing Django. So in WebSockets, it really is a similar workflow, which makes it easy to, to work with in some respects if you're familiar with Django workflow. So user A uh, sends a WebSocket request, for example, and in this time we need to deal with the WebSockets in a different way. So we can't use the Web Server Gateway interface anymore. We need a different technology. And that's the asynchronous server gateway interface, ASGI. So we're going to be utilizing channels, which comes with a, um, a package which will handle all that. So we don't need to really worry or drill down or do anything special there to enable that. So all we really know, need to know at this point is that we're going to handle the data or requests slightly differently using, utilizing the ASGI. So that will go off to Django and that will be routed like Django views, goes uh, the data goes to the URL and then the URL points to the view. So a similar situation here, we're going to be utilizing a routed path uh, to route the WebSocket to a consumer. So let's just think about the consumer or let's think of a consumer as a Django view. It's the same type of thing. The data will then eventually, or request will eventually get to the consumer, which is a page similar to views. And we then sort out all the logic and what we want to do with that data and then send it back to the, to the users or to the group that want to access that or have that information. So in this case, it would be the chat room. So user A will send a chat room message that would go through this infrastructure here, go to the consumer. The consumer then will get that message and then direct it to the users that are in that chat room through this technology. So these arrows only go one way, but of course um, they do go both ways. So hopefully that makes sense. Important here to understand is that we're pretty much doing exactly the same as we've been doing before in Django, except we're using ASGI, not WSGI. And instead of using Django views, we're just going to call them consumers. So here we go. So we've got user A, they go to our chat room that sets up the um, web sockets and we start a, a WebSocket session, say, between the user A and our, um, our technology here in the back end. So we send a message and that goes to eventually to the consumer in the back end in Django. And then we then send a message in red and that message would then go out to all the other users. So that's a general setup here. OK, so hopefully now you've got a general overview of what's going to be happening behind the scenes. So essentially, we just need to program this out. So at the moment, we've got this general idea, hopefully, of planted a image in your in your mind. Uh, everyone can now send a message through utilizing WebSockets in real time. But we're using chat rooms and the user is going to go into those chat rooms and there's going to be multiple chat rooms. So how do we know who to send a message to? So we're utilizing a package called channels. So with channels comes this idea of groups. So every, every client, uh, every user in our chat room will have a reply channel. And we can keep track of the user reply channels connected to our server. So with the chat application, we're going to need multiple users. 
um, or we're going to have, sorry, multiple users in one room. So we're going to need, to need to keep track of who's in that room. So we can't really keep track of who's in that room, but what we can do is create user groups and assign a group to a chat room. So each chat room, say we've got multiple chat rooms, um, each chat room will have a, will be assigned to a group. So when the user goes into that chat room, their reply channel will be entered into that group. So we're just managing groups here. So we make a new group and that's associated to a chat room. When a user goes to our chat room group, um, that user then is um, associated to that group. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so we're just adding users into groups. So the idea here is that when we want to send a message back, obviously because we have all the users in a group, we don't need to send individual messages as such. We just send them to the group. And obviously all the users in that group will have or receive the message. Sorry, of course we're sending a message to all the users, but the point is here that we're just logically um, placing users into group to better uh, manage users so we know who to send the message to. So I feel so I didn't do a very good job there explaining this, but you can see here, user A will send a chat room message, bam, it goes to the server, etc., and then a message will get sent back. Now, of course, we're going to send it to every individual user, but because we only want to send it to the users that are in that specific chat room and not to everyone who's connected to our server, we find out who's connected to that chat room through utilizing a group. So users in that chat room are assigned to that group, and then we know to send that message to that group. When we program this out, you'll, this will be very clear of what's happening. Okay, so that's pretty much all the setup here for this application. Um, hopefully you've got a general idea now of what's happening and we can just program this out and it should make it a lot easier for you to understand having that knowledge that we've just gone through. So the process here is, is, is like building a Django application really. We install an application in this, sorry, package. So we're going to install the Django channels package to get all this working. Remember that comes with a, a server. So on Windows, there's an additional setup which I'll take you through. And then we go ahead and create some Django templates and views for the chat room. And then we're going to create a, a channels route or we're going to utilize channels routing. So this is just think of this as exactly the same as exactly the same as the, the Django URLs. So the data comes into this from the server, from the user, and then we need to um, manage that data and move it to the right view. So with Django, we obviously use the URLs to point data to views. So in channels, remember, we're using routing um, to send the data to consumers, which is essentially a view or similar to views. And then the consumer will, inside of that, we have all the logic, and then that will then send the data back to whoever needs the data. So we go through that process. And then, of course, we need to just configure the templates um, to handle and set up WebSockets. OK, right, let's get started with this application. So the first steps is I'm going to create a virtual machine, install Django and so on. Um, if you don't want to follow this, if you've got your own application, etc., just skip to the next section. There is a timeline in the description. So just move on to the next section if you don't need this. But if you are completely new to Django, I'm going to go through this step by step um, so that you can follow this as you um, as we go along. So let's first of all start off by creating a uh, virtual machine. So I'm assuming you've got Python installed, of course. And uh, so I'll go ahead and create a virtual machine for this in a folder called VMV. So obviously I've started this um, program in a, in a new folder. So let's just create that. So this is gonna build a virtual machine, which we're then going to move into. So I type in VMV and then go into the uh, scripts folder on Windows, this is, and then go inside of here and activate. So now you can see that I've activated this virtual machine. So I'm now working in the virtual machine. This is essentially going to allow me to work in a, um, a virtual environment. So a smaller environment, so away from the, the main Python files, etc. So I'm creating my own little environment here to create this application. So let's go ahead now 
and install Django. So we're going to use the pip manager or the um, Python package manager pip and we're going to install Django. So once we're done with that, we can then go ahead now and install. Remember, this is on a Windows environment, so we're going to then pip install and we're going to install channels. So if you're not familiar with channels, it's worth having a look at the channels website. So we're going to be utilize some of the initial code. If you go over the tutorial, um, this tutorial that we're developing here is going to be very similar. The idea of actually building this um, tutorial I was inspired by having a look at some of the uh, the introduction, etc. And I just wanted to build upon it. So by all means, have a look at the introduction and read through it. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now to beginners, having gone through the slides um, that we started in this tutorial. So you can see here we're installing uh, channels and then it instructs us then to actually include channels in our application. So what we're going to need to do now um, is actually build a Django application. So let's now actually build a Django project. So PY, and then we're going to, I'm oh, sorry, we're gonna use a, the Django admin, sorry, uh, to actually start a new project. So start project, and then we're gonna call this project uh, core. I want to install it into this folder here, not into its individual folder. So I use the dot. So that's the Django project created. So let's just build a new application now. Um, we we'll use the manage pi in this case. So we'll start a new app and we're going to call this uh, chat. Okay, so now we have our folder here. So what we need to do now is we need some, some URLs. So let's just go ahead and add some files in the chat. So we're going to need the URLs file. Uh, to set some paths and that should be it there. So let's just go into the core. Um, let's not forget that in the settings, we now need to add two items here. So we need to add in the installed apps, the fact that we've just created a new app called chat. And then in addition to that, we also need to add channels. So let's just go back to instructions here. So you can see here that we need to include channels. So let's just do that. So that just brings in that application into our, into our application. So we now have access to channels. Okay, so with that in place, we can go ahead and let's just do a migrate. So let's do a, a migrate, initial migrate. So that's just gonna create the initial tables, et cetera, that we might utilize for this project and apply them to a database. So we created this database here, the SQLite database. So for this project, we're not going to be utilizing any other Postgres database, etc. We just utilize the SQL database. So now we need to build a connection from the URLs in the core project to the URLs that we created in the chat. So because we want to separate the URLs away from this main URL um, section here, it just allows us to kind of micromanage our URLs in the chat and make our URLs in here just specific to the chat. It just allows us to manage our URLs more effectively, potentially, you don't have to do this. So what we want to do is import the include because we want to use include here to include the URLs that are right here in the chat. So we do that first and then we can go ahead and actually include. So we just need to add a new path. We define the fact that we're going to use a folder or a we're going to extend the um, URL to chat. So when we want to access chat application, we need to um, do that by typing in chat into the uh, URL or the path in our browser. And then we're going to include the chat URLs. That's the file we've got right here. So we do that. So now we've included this file into our project. We can now extend the URLs here. So at the moment, there's probably nothing um, probably not too much that we need to do here in actual fact, but let's just go ahead and create this. So from the URLs, we import the path because we're using path here. So we need to import that in. And then from the views, we're just going to import everything from the views. Um, so eventually we're going to hook up our URLs to a view. So we do that. And then here we've got two paths. So first of all, we've got the root path for this so that when we type into the browser um, slash chat, and then nothing else. That's going to take us to this view here. 
So we're going to set up a home page view for our chat channel. And then when the user then types in the chat room name after that, so slash, so chat slash, and then the room name, uh, that's going to then take you to this new view called room. So we've got two views there, one for the home page of our chat, and then one for a page where we're going to type in or access our chat room. If you need the additional information, so here we're setting up a string. So we're going to take in a string. So this is going to be a named um, variable that we're going to pass to the view. So to access this data in the view, we're going to na name it room name, and we're going to access that data through room name in the view. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. So let's just do some simple management here. We're obviously going to need uh, some templates. So let's create some templates right here. So a folder called templates. And then inside of here, you can add, can add a new folder if you want to, but we're just going to work within this folder here called templates. So let's go ahead and first of all, create an index page or we'll probably has to use a base page. Uh, so let's use a, we're going to create a base page. So we're going to need HTML page for base. That's going to include our general HTML that we're going to need for the page. And then we're also going to need another page called uh, index.html. So we're going to use that as the home page for the chat area. And then we're also going to need a new template for the actual chat room. So we'll call this chatroom.html. And there we go. So that's the three templates that we're going to need there. So let's go ahead now and connect some of these templates together to our view. So we've got the URL that's going to take us to the index of the default path or the root path of our chat path. Remember when we type in slash chat in our browser, that's going to take you to this path here. So we want to connect a view uh, called index to that. So let's go into our views. And now you can see here we've created a very simple view. We've imported in render and then we're taking in the request and then we're going to send them um, to the template called index.html. So this is going to connect to our index template right here. Okay, so with that in place, we can probably now go ahead and, oh, we can probably now go ahead and run the server and see if this is working. So it says here, you have not set an ASGA application, which is needed to run the server. So because we have channels installed, well, it's expecting to see something. Remember, we've imported it into our project. So what we need to do here before we start the server or before we can start the server, let's just go into settings and we've added channels into our installed app. So let's go down to the bottom and we're just going to include a new um, ASG, ASGI application parameter. And that's going to be um, set to the core routing application. So let's now go ahead and just try to start our application again. Okay, so here we've got now a problem. It says attribute error module chat views has no attribute room. So this is a really simple fix here. Um, I do apologize. I realize that I could have just shown you all of this information, but I think it's good in tutorials to show you some of the problems that might occur because this is where you're going to spend most of your time. It's okay seeing a tutorial step by step and it goes great. Um, but when it goes wrong, that's when there's problems and the tutorial becomes pretty useless in all, in all honesty, doesn't it? Because you're then frustrated trying to get it fixed. If you're doing something that you're not familiar with and you're trying to learn, then you're just left with trying to fix it for the next four or five hours. And it could be really simple. So here it says attribute error. Module chat.views has no attribute room. So here, if you go back into your URLs, remember we've defined two URLs. Now, in actual fact, um, we don't we haven't actually set up the view here. So this is why there's a problem. So let's go ahead now and actually create our view as it's expecting in the views. So inside of our view in our chat 
application. We've now added this new function for room. So that matches obviously our URL. So we've called it room, view room. And you can see here, we're just returning the chat room HTML page. Um, so we just add that chat room there in the chat room HTML. So we know we've accessed that page. And you can see what's happening in the URLs is we're taking in this um, variable called room name and we passed it over to the views. So the room name it comes into the, uh, the function here and then we utilize it to set up some data. So room name, what you call room name. So key values. So this can then be returned back to the page or to the template. So for example, if our room name is called test, that's going to be placed into the URL, uh, chat slash test. That's going to then be passed into our function. And then we can then utilize it to then output it to the chat room template. So you can see now there's an additional problem. Uh, it says cannot import ASGI application module core routing. So let's go back to the settings. And at the bottom, if you remember, we actually define core routing application. So we're going to need to set this up. So we're going to need to set up this routing for our ASGI application. So let's go ahead now and create a new file. So inside of our core, it's expecting a file called routing. So let's do that. .py. So we create our routing and inside of here, then it's expecting application. So what we need to do now is just set up that. If you remember in the previous slide, I mentioned the fact that like when we um, send a normal HTTP request to the Django server, that request, that URL is matched to a URL in our URLs. So let me just explain that. Um, so in our URLs here, we, we match one of our URLs and then we know where to send the data to what view. So what we're going to do now is set up a similar mechanic, but for channels for our asynchronous application. So we're going to set up in this case, the router. So it's the same type of thing as the URLs, um, but we're going to set up the router so that we can then route the data to the consumer eventually. So that's the first step. So let's go back into our routing. Now, if you remember what happened in our URLs, we created this entry here where we said, okay, we could put all the URL paths here, but just for manageability so that we can manage our paths individually, depending upon which application we're using, we're just going to also uh, create an additional URL file inside of chats. And then we're going to just put the individual chat URLs that's associated to this application into here. So all we're really doing is just extending this list. That's all we're doing. Um, but instead of actually putting the list right here, we're just going to import it in from this URL. So at the end of the day, all the URLs will end up in a big list like this and Django will go through them. But of course, it just allows us to better manage our URLs in a separate file that's associated to the application that the URLs are using. So we're going to do the same thing here with the routing. So this file here is going to be um, sending or importing or utilizing uh, another routing file inside of our chat project. So let's set up this routing. So first up, we import the auth middleware stack. So this just for now is an example of the fact that in channels, we can also hook into the Django authentication system. So what we might end up doing is having the users so that they have to actually log in or sign up to our service before that they can before they can access a chat room. So that will happen eventually, potentially with this application. We're not going to potentially do that in this application tutorial, sorry, but that's something that we can do. But we are going to utilize this to um, find out who the user is. So at the end of this tutorial, tutorial, we'll have the application being able to identify the user who are logged in and we can then utilize that name or their username inside of the chat channel. Because as we're probably familiar with, we want to know who's actually sent the message so we can capture the username and also put that in the message that's sent. So next up, we're we'll import the protocol type router and URL router. 
So this is just some mechanics from channels so we can utilize routing. And then what we also want to do is we're going to import the, the routing from chat. So we're going to do that eventually. So let's just um, comment that out for now. So we're going to set up like we do with the URLs, as, as I was explaining, we're going to set out our routing in chat, and that's going to be specific to this chat project. OK, so next up, we're now going to, like we do with the URLs, we're just going to, instead of using URL patterns, um, we're just going to use application equals protocol type router. So essentially here, we're just saying when we get a um, when we get a WS request, a uh, WebSocket um, request, this is what this is how to route it. This is where to route it to. So, if you read this through here, it takes a mapping of a protocol type, in this case WS, and then does something with it. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Now, because we want to um, utilize authentication, Django authentication, we're now going to wrap the URLs in the um, authentication or the auth middleware stack. And that's going to allow us to utilize authentication. So we now add that into our project right there. So like I said, that's connected to the auth middleware stack there. So we're just importing the authentication in. And then finally, we just add our URL router. So our URL routes. So the next task that we need to do here then is we just now define our routes. So like before, as I keep mentioning, um, we're going to be utilizing the routes inside of the file in the chat. So the chat routing. So we've imported the chat routing in. Uh, so now we need to point to it. So we can do that very easily by typing in the chat.routing. So that's the file. And inside of here, we're going to then connect it to the WebSocket URL patterns. So now let's just go ahead and this is in yellow because it doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and now create a new file here called routing.py. So inside of here, we're now going to find our routes. This project is going to be utilizing more advanced path mechanisms or facilities, the relative path. So I will give you a brief overview of what's happening here, but I will have a tutorial which covers um, in more depth relative paths. So the idea here is that sometimes a regular path string isn't um, doesn't quite meet our requirements for our piece of software. So we want to make a more advanced paths um, for our application. So let's go ahead. So instead of having, in this case, um, URL patterns, we just define this WebSocket URL patterns. So this is specific WebSocket URL patterns. Um, so that's pretty plain text. And this time we're using RE path instead of just path. And now we're going to set up our path. So like you would normally, we're just going to set out the general parameters um, of the URL location. And then we add in the previous here in the URLs, we have, for example, string room name. So that's just going to look like this, for example, with relative paths. So here we're going to take, an, a, this is the value that's going to be passed over to the view, the room name, and that, that's the name of the value. And then obviously that's going to capture the name of the room. So after that, like we normally do, we then have in the URLs, we normally have then the view and then the name of the view. So in routing here, we just have the consumer. Remember, I was telling you that consumers essentially views. And then we have the name of the consumer, so chat room consumer. So what we need to do now is just connect this URL to a consumer. So let's go ahead in chat and create a new file. We're going to call that consumer .py. OK, so now we have the consumer. So in our routing, we just need to connect that up or create a new consumer called chat room consumer. So now we can go into the consumer. Um, we want to utilize asynchronous, uh, or we want to create an application that's asynchronous. So from channels, um, we import all the tools that we need. Uh, so we import the async WebSocket consumer. So we then utilize that. So we build a new class. So if you remember, our class name is in our root in here. So chat room consumer. So that's our class that we're building. So in our consumers, we call it that. 
And then of course, what we do then is just bring in the async WebSocket consumer. So that's how we start off. Let's just um, end that or pass that for now. Okay, so let's go back into our server and let's just see if we can now run the server. So this problem then, if you go into the routing, I forgot to actually import the consumer. So like in our URLs, we import the views. So in our routing, we also need to import the consumer. Um, hopefully, by me explaining this, you can see that there's just a complete match between utilizing URLs and views and routing in consumers. Uh, it's just a different terminology and obviously a different technology. So we've got that in now and you can now see that the server has started. So if we head over to the server web page, we can now select slash chat and we've got the index page. And then if we go to the room slash, we've then got the room, chat room. Now, if I were to type in anything here, notice that whatever I type, whatever I type in, um, so chat, whatever I type in here is just going to create a new chat room. So this is how we're going to create multiple chat rooms in the fact that we can enter anything here and it will then be utilized or sent to the chat room page. So if you go back to the routing, that explains the W plus. So this W plus is basically saying anything after this, um, after the chat slash is going to be recognized and picked up. And whatever we type into the URL for the room name, that's going to be passed over to the consumer inside of the room name variable. So we're creating a variable here with the name of room name, and we're putting in whatever someone's typed into that URL or whatever's in that URL for the room name. So just to reiterate here, the W and to fully explain, the W basically is a match, a word character. So we're saying match um, any words with any length plus, um, and this W is going to match any upper or lowercase characters. And that can be alphabet or digit, did it, did it, digits, sorry, uh, zero to nine. And also it will also match uh, the underscore character. So that's what the W does. Now this here, the dollar actually ends. So we need to actually type in chat and then the room name. If we were then to type in slash and then something else, then that wouldn't match this path. So let's just uh, identify that. So if we type in after something after here, notice it doesn't take us anywhere. So what's happening is that this dollar is essentially capturing that. And that's why the dollar's there. So hopefully this is uh, uh, making a little bit more sense now to you, how this um, path is being generated and used. Sorry to slow things down here, but what we have now is a baseline uh, for our application. And I suppose I wanted just to point out the fact that this is how you potentially could utilize um, this technology for doing something else that you might want to perform. So we've got everything in place now. We've got the routing like the URLs. We've got the consumer ready like the views. So all we need to do now really is define something. So when someone actually goes to our, our route and goes to our consumer, we now just need to, to do something here essentially. So like I keep saying, hopefully you can see the similarities between utilizing router and consumers and URLs and views. Okay, so now we've got this baseline in place. We can now obviously um, start to build our chat application. So let's just start building this up. So what we want to do, if we think about this logically, is we want to do something to, um, or we want to have something done or start something when someone connects to our room, our chat room. So we're going to need a function for that. So here we're using async. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So when we have asynchronous functions or coroutine in Python, we declare it with the async def. So this is going to change how the call behaves. Now, if you think about, or think back to a normal function here, standard Python function, uh, we call an object and then Python blocks and moves into the code. 
it runs it and then it returns the result uh, to the caller and then unblocks it. So utilizing async, this works slightly different. So calling it will immediately return a coroutine object, which basically says I can run it. No problem. I can run the coroutine um, with the arguments um, you called. And I can also return the results when you await me. So if you want to understand this, this is going to require a little bit of a longer explanation, uh, which we're going to skip in this tutorial. Um, so by all means, I probably will make a tutorial on this eventually. So have a look if I've uh, if, you, if I have already built one um, or potentially stop now and just have a look if you're interested in um, how this this works in a little bit more deeper way. Um, there's plenty of information online, of course. Um, so it would take me maybe 10, 15 minutes for us to kind of fully understand this. So we want to get on and finish this application. So this is a setup. So essentially we're going to use the async um, functions here and then pass in these additional um, functionality in the await. And we're going to create a, a few different async um, functions. So let's go ahead now and start building. So first of all, we're building a connection. We're setting up the WebSocket or enabling WebSocket activity um, to a particular chat room. So when we type into the, the browser here, when we go into the, when we go into chat, um, we then have an option of creating a new chat room and that's then going to take us to a new chat room here. So once we get to this point, we want to initiate, initiate or connect to WebSockets or utilize WebSockets. So the first thing that we're probably going to need is the name of the, of the chat room. So let's go ahead and add this in. So because we're utilizing um, more advanced routing, it allows us to extract information from the URL route. So here, what we want to extract is the room name. Now, remember that um, the room name that we type in in the URL, that will be captured inside of the parameter or um, variable here, room name. So if we go back to the view, oh, sorry, the consumer, we're creating, um, we're going to get the URL root um, and then we're going to select from it um, the room name. So that then gets placed into self room name. Okay, so that's the first piece of information that we collect. So let me just take you back to this slide. Now, remember what we said that we we're going to place users inside of a group. So what that meant for our chat room was that we're going to, when any user goes into our chat room, now what that means is we're using chat room. Um, this is going to be about JavaScript. So our chat room is going to be called JS. Obviously, we want other people to be able to navigate to that page, to the JS page, and also enter our chat room. So when someone does that, when two or more people go into this room, we want to put those users into the same group. So that's what we need to manage next. So now we just set up the, or we define the room group name. So here we've got the self uh, room underscore group name. Uh, so we generally, or we collect the um, self group name and we put it now into the room group name. So we've got essentially here two variables, room name and group or room group name. So now we're going to construct a group. Uh, so remember that utilizing group allows us to broadcast messages to those users inside of the group. So this needs to go into an await. Um, we can utilize the channels. So we're specifically now talking about the channels package. This is a functionality of channels package. So we have something called channel underscore layer dot group add. So we can go ahead and just add this in. So await and then we've got this function here called group add. So channel layer dot group add. So now we're going to construct a new group. So how we want to create a group is, well, we're going to need uh, two things here. We're going to take in two things. 
we need the room group name and then the channel name. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we add in the uh, room group name, which is um, what we've generated up here. So first of all, obviously we collected name and then we put it into the room group name. So we go ahead and do that, put that in. So self dot uh, room group name. And then the second parameter is going to be the um, channel name. Uh, so we go ahead and do that. There we go. So the channel name attribute this contains a pointer to the channel layer instance and the channel name that will reach the consumer. So I've made that sound complicated, but it just allows me just to reiterate. So all we've done here is we've created a new group. So behind the scenes, we've created a new group and then we've just instructed that that group will be utilizing this consumer here and all the functionality that it might have within it. That's pretty much all we've done there. Okay, so now we have this connect functionality in place. So as you might imagine, we also going to, we're also going to need to manage the disconnect. So connect and disconnect. So here we're going to um, set up another async function here. Uh, we're just going to call this disconnect. And all we need to do here is just discard something. So in this case, we're just going to discard the group. So it's going to look a little bit like this. So we're going to need another await. So we'll pass that in. So here we're going to utilize channel layer group discard. So this is just another functionality. So group add and group discard is from the channels. You can read up on this in the channels documentation. So inside of this function, then we're going to just add or we're going to need to know what group we want to um, discard. In this case, we know it's the self room group, uh, self room group name. That's what's up here. That's what we generated. And then in addition to that, we're also going to need to know the channel to remove. And there we go. So that was fairly simple. So let's get this started or let's get this moving by just adding here another weight. And this time we're going to utilize group send. So as soon as I'm um, here, we're inside the connect still. So as soon as we connect, we're just going to send a message to the group. So obviously we are going to need to know um, in this case, what group to send to. So as you might imagine, we need to define the group name. So obviously that's all being filtered down. So we've got the group name here. So we get the group name and then we just then define what message we want to send. So here we're utilizing Jason. So we're just going to import in JSON into the project so we can utilize that shortly. And so now we can go ahead and add some data. So um, key values. So here we're going to have type. Um, we'll just have a test and message. And then we're just going to pass in a string. Uh, it's going to be tester uh, is going to equal tester. OK, so that sets up the message. Now notice here I'm using type test and message. So the workflow here then is that we've set up a, a group message to send. So now we need to manage that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to receive the message from the group and then we're going to send it across um, via WebSocket. So let's go ahead now and add a new function here. We're going to call this test test a message. Now notice that it correlates to this type. So test a message and the name of this function. So test a message. So that's important. And then we're just going to collect the information that was sent across. So here it was um, the event was tester. So we collect the information and now we're going to send it um, the message via web socket. So to do that, we just simply just set up a, a new await. And then you can see what's happening here. Um, if I just move that down one. So we get the, the text data. So this is JSON. And we're basically just sending across to the template a um, 
key value. So the key is going to be tester and the value inside of it is going to be the message that was in uh, tester. So here we collected the data from the group send. The data inside was just a string called with the value tester. So we captured that information, put it in this variable called tester. And now we're going to send it across. So we use JSON dumps uh, to create our new key value here. So our value, oh, sorry, our key is tester and the data inside of that is going to be this string called tester. So really I should um, name that data something else. I'm just going to call that in hello, hello world. Um, so that's the data that we're going to send across. Okay, so now let's go back to the uh, template and set this up so that we can actually see the message. Okay, so back in our chat room HTML page, um, so I'm not going to use the base. Um, by all means, if you want to use a template system in Django, please do. So for this example, um, I might change this later, refactor it. So I've just copied and pasted in the Bootstrap um, default template from the Bootstrap website here. Um, so go ahead over to bootstrap or getbootstrap.com, go to the introduction, there's a starter template there, I've just copied and pasted that in. So now let's start uh, to build our WebSocket. So let's get rid of this and let's just create a, a new script. So we're gonna add some JavaScript right here. So as you can imagine, the first thing that we might want to do is to actually set up the connection. Uh, so our WebSocket connection, so let's do that first. So here you can see the code. So we create up this variable called chat socket equals new WebSocket. So we're taking a few different parameters here. You can see what's happening here, um, potentially. We're creating a new WebSocket and what we're doing is we're constructing a URL. So you can see here we're utilizing WS, not HTTP. That's the first thing. And then plus the Windows local host host, sorry, location host. So that's the 127.001 or whatever the domain is. And then after that, we extend WS slash chat. And then we've got the room name plus um, the dash. So let's just go back into the routing. Remember that that's what we set up. I didn't mention it, but we're utilizing WS um, for WebSockets slash and then chat and then the room name. So that's the URL that we've set up that we're going to be utilizing. And that's where we're, where we're sending our WebSocket um, request. So we, we're okay of selecting this so we can get the location host. That's not a problem. Um, but something that we definitely need to do is actually collect the room name. So we need a way of actually collecting the room name so we can insert it here. So if you think back to the view, when we head over to the chat room page, what we do is we send back the room name. So that's important to remember. So remember what's happening here. The URL has been set up in Django. So we get the string uh, room name. So we set up a variable um, room name and then we put whatever the user has typed in here. So in this case, it's JS. So we're passing that over to Django through the URL pattern to the view. And then what we're doing is we're taking that in to our, in our function here, and then we're sending it back to the template. So what we have now in the background is some Python um, with a variable called room name. And the data inside of that is the, the name of the room. Now, of course, Python can't talk directly to JavaScript. So what we need to do is find a way of um, taking that data and putting it into a format that Java can understand and utilize. So in our um, in our in our page, um, I put it in the wrong place. Uh, apologies. So in our um, chat room page, let's just get rid of that. What we need to do first is just utilize a little bit of Django. Um, Django provides us a tool to um, take these variables that we send back to the template and then put them into a format that JavaScript can utilize. So that's done um, in this manner. So for example, here. So before what we normally do when we pass variables using the URL in Django, we normally do something like this, don't we? To output the data. So what we can do is utilize the Django JavaScript or JSON script, sorry. 
and then take that data and put it into a new um, key value pair. Uh, so obviously the key is going to be called room name and the value is going to be whatever's inside the room name, which is obviously the room name for this chat room. So we collect that data and now we can utilize it. So what we need to do next is actually get that data and we reference that data via text content. So inside of our script, this has got to be inside of our script, we use the text content uh, to collect that data. And there we go. So we now we've called that room name. So we collected that data and then we put it into here, right here. So this is um, room name. So now inside of here is the room name. So now what we've done here, we've created our WebSocket connection script um, by utilizing the WebSocket um, protocol and then the window location host, that's just the host that's been extracted from the browser. Um, that will be google.com or in our case, 127.001 slash 8,000, we're using port 8,000. And then we continue constructing our URL. So WS slash chat. Remember that's in, in, in our routing, WS chat. And then the room name. So now we've got the room name here, um, which we've collected from the Django URL. Um, that's been the data that's been passed back by the URL that I've just shown you. And then we've collected that information and then it's placed there. So hopefully that makes sense of the workflow, what's happening so far. Okay, so let's just in the body, let's just create a, a new div. We're going to give this ID of uh, user. I'm just going to call this user hello. And then we go ahead and finish that up. So what we want to do is just pass over the data that we set up when we make a connection. So it's just going to say hello world. Uh, so let's remember that it's stored in tester. That's what we are passing it over as. So let's go back into our chat room. So we've created this um, placement holder for the data. That's where it's going to appear. So now what we need to do is um, receive the message and then output it. So let's do that next. So to receive a piece of information or receive a message, we're going to need to reference it via the chat socket because remember inside of here is the web socket connection. So let's do that first. So chat socket, and then we're going to use on message. So when we receive a message, we're going to run a function and then we're going to put all the data that's received and we're going to parse it via JSON and put it into this variable called data. So that's what's going to happen. So every time we see a message, um, a WebSocket message, that's what's going to happen. It's going to pass into here and we're going to parse the data and then put it into this variable data. Of course, by all means, you can, for example, console log that. So just to check, see what data is actually being returned, for example. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's just finish that off. Um, so now what we want to do is obviously display our information. So let's just build a, a simple script, which is going to do that. So we're utilizing, um, or we're going to utilize the document query selector. So let's go ahead and do that. So we, we say document query selector, and then obviously the um, selector that we want to utilize is going to be the user hello. So we're going to select this, and then we're just going to inject some a code into that, or the value that's being returned from our consumer. So we're going to inject this into it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got that. And then we want the dot value. And then that's going to equal uh, data. So the data that's been returned. And then inside of the data, we should have a variable or a data called reference by tester, if you remember. So let's go ahead and save that and then go back to our page. And then just uh, let's go to a new room. And there we go. OK, so there's a number of problems. So let's try and work out what the problem is. So first of all, the JavaScript is completely whack. Um, we're using ID, so let's have a look at the query selector. Of course. 
we need to actually identify the ID we're using. So that's a simple one to fix. And then value here is not value, is it? Uh, we need to utilize the, we could use inner HTML. Okay, so that should receive the data back. So in actual fact, there should have been a problem. I didn't expect it to be the JavaScript there. Um, so the JavaScript is now in place and that should work okay. But there's a few additional steps that we need to consider um, and actually apply before we can get this working. So let's have a look at those. So the first thing that we need to do when we're building a WebSocket connection is that uh, during the handshake, we need to send a message to the, um, the WebSocket connect and this is the, uh, the connect and your application must accept or reject the connection. So we need to set that in place. So what we've done here is we've added a new await and we've included self.accept. So without that in place, what you'll find is that in the terminal, you'll receive a message that we can't accept the connection. So that's an important step that we need to add. Apologies for adding it to the end. I just wanted to kind of make uh, you aware of that in a more definitive way. So we need to actually create that functionality and accept um, or reject the connection. And that's before the handshake is completed and the messages can be received. So in addition to that, and why I put this message here and not maybe before, is because we want to accept that first before we start sending messages. Okay, so that's the first thing that needs to be done. So the final step that we need to take is something I left to the end here because um, it's, it's an additional step which we don't really have to take when we're working in a, an, a testing environment or a development environment. And it can be a tricky step to get started using channel um, because this step can be, uh, particularly on a Windows machine, this is where you're really going to um, find it difficult. So if you've been following the uh, other series that we have on this channel, the Celery series, you'll know a little bit about message um, sending messages uh, within the Django ecosystem and the fact that we have a piece of software and Django sends a message to um, our broker, our message broker, and then that sends a message to Celery and from there we can then uh, perform actions. So here is a similar situation. Um, if you've seen that series, this is going to make sense and I'll try and explain it afterwards, but if you just um, get rid of Celery in that kind of framework and just add channels, that's essentially what's happening here. So Django needs to communicate with channel. Remember, that's the application that we installed. So to build that communication between channel and Django, we're going to need a message broker. So here in the channels documentation, it recommends utilizing Redis. Now, if you're using a Windows machine, using Redis isn't probably going to be um, feasible. I do have a tutorial in the um, in this platform. I do have a tutorial um, where you can utilize Redis on an external server. So go ahead and you can definitely watch that if you want to use that. Um, but in actual fact, what the documentation in um, channels on the channels website doesn't necessarily show you is that you can actually just use a local um, back end. So what we need to do, if you go into the core settings, you need to set up here a channel layer um, backend. So that might be, like I said, Redis. Um, and you can definitely try and um, sort that out if you want to. We're not going to go over that installation here. So Redis will look something like that, for example, uh, as a channel layer. Um, but here we're just going to use the um, channel layers in memory channel layer. So when we're developing, we don't need to worry about installing Redis or if you wanted to use um, RabbitMQ, for example. Again, I'm talking about the Celery series that I had or that we have on, in this platform. Um, so you can just kind of forget about it that now. And that's why I kind of left it to the end. If you just use this configuration, everything is just going to work. Once you start thinking about deployment and scaling this up, that's when you can have a look into Redis. And like I said, um, it is in the other se the Celery series on this channel, uh, how to install or how to utilize Redis on an external server for free. So by all means, go and set that up and ask any questions here if you want, if you want to kind of get that working. But that's going to be a, a step and a configuration that you'll definitely need to apply here to get this working.
Okay, so now we have everything in place uh, to push this message to our page and um, have everything working. So remember, we're pushing this message um, to our group. We've got the disconnect in place in the chat room. Uh, don't forget, we set up our WebSocket right here and we've collected the, the room name. We've added that in um, so we can build this connection. And now we're just going to collect the data back um, from, in this case, our consumer. And we're just going to output it to this um, placement here. OK, so I refresh the page. Uh, if I go to any channel or any um, room, you can see it's doing exactly the same thing. Um, happy days. There we go. So let's go back into the into the application here and have a look at some of these messages that we're getting. So you can see in the terminal from the server, we're returning HTTP GET. So you can see that that starts off. Um, remember the workflow to begin with where I mentioned the fact that we start off with um, HTTP request and then we get upgraded to WebSockets. So that's what you're actually seeing right here. So we start off get, that's the channel name, or sorry, the, the chat room name. So we start with a 200 and then we go to WebSockets. We start with a handshake and that's been accepted now because we've added that piece of code. And then we connect and then we get some information. So you can see here that, um, Oh, so that's, that's uh, sorry, us, us again going to another channel. And you can see that um, we've disconnected from the first chat and then we've handshaked to the new chat channel. Sorry about the channel or the chat room names here. Apologies with that. And then we've got another connect again. So you can see the general flow of what's happening here behind the scenes. Okay, so now we've got the basic functionality in place. We can now go to the next step of actually building our asynchronous application so that the user can actually place a message in our chat room and then that will go eventually to the consumer and then send it back to the group or broadcast that message to the group. All the users that are currently in that chat room will then see the message. So that's our next step. Okay, right, let's go into the chat room HTML. Let's create a new text area. So we're gonna use this text area as a place where users can actually um, see all the messages um, that have been placed in the in the chat room. Then in addition to that, we're also going to need some sort of input field where we can type new text, a new chat message, and then we're going to need some inputs there for a button, and then we're just going to give it a value of send. So these are the three parameters that we're going to need. So I've utilized IDs, input, submit, and chat text. Okay, so now we need to deal with um, our new message that we want to send. So let's go ahead and first of all, create a new um, document query selector. So we're gonna select the submit button here and then we're gonna create an on-click function. So when we click the submit button, we're gonna do something and that's gonna basically, first of all, collect the information um, from the input. So we're gonna collect the information from the input and then we're going to um, get that value. And then we're going to now set up a new send message. So we use the chat socket. Remember, this is our web socket connection that we created. Um, so we use our chat socket, which is our WS connection, and then we're going to send. So we're going to utilize the send, and then we're going to send some data. So we're going to use Java, uh, JSON stringify to send some data. And that data is going to be, um, we're going to um, call that, or the key is going to be message. And the data we're going to send is the message. So remember, we've captured the message from the input. We put it into this variable called message, and then now we're gonna send it back to our server. Okay, so there finally, we just utilize the message input dom.value. We just remove the value from the message input dom.value uh, just to clear things up. And there we go. So we now have a method of sending information um, to our server. So now what we need to do is go to the back end and handle this request. So obviously this request is going to end up in our um, consumer here. So we now need to figure and work out a way of handling it. So we've got the connect. Remember, we then send a message after we connect by default and we send it to our group. Um, now we've got the disconnect. So now we need to place this after our disconnect. So this is our workflow here. 
we need to receive a message from the WebSocket and deal with the data. So we just collect the data. We then send the message to the room group like we did before. And then we need to then receive the message um, from the room group. And then we need to then send the message to the WebSocket. Okay, so here we go. So we created this new async function here called receive. So we're gonna receive the message and then we're going to pass that in as text data. So that's the message we've received. And then we're going to um, get the data um, and then put it into a new function here, sorry, a new variable here called text data JSON. And then we're going to take that data. Now remember that data, if we go back to our, into our chat room here, if you remember, we passed the data as message. So we referenced it as message. So this is why we go into the data and then we collect the message and put it in this new variable called message. So just to confirm, we get the data from the from what we've received from the user. And then we basically extract a little piece of information out of it, in this case, the message, and we put it into a new variable here called message. So now we just follow a similar path that we did earlier. So we need to now send it to the group send. So we need to send it to the group, so it's utilizing group send. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, it's just gonna be a another await and what we need to do is um, obviously pass in the group name so we're going to need to, to know the group name so we send in the group name and then we've got the data so the data is pretty simple um, because we know what data we've got um, so let's uh, send in the data now we've collected the data as message so we're going to send that across that's what we're doing here. So let's just finish that off and that. So we've referenced again type. Okay, so we're gonna utilize that, if you remember, to actually then send it to the next stage. So that's what we need to do there. So what we've done, apologies there, if you can just see that, is that we've now sent that message to the group. We define what group we wanted to send it to, and then we've also then defined what we want to send the message. So now we move on to actually sending it, um, send the message uh, to the WebSocket. So let's first of all uh, collect this information. So now we go ahead and send to the WebSocket. So here what we got, um, sorry, send, receive the message from the group and then send the WebSocket. So we received the message. So remember we're just, uh, matching the chat room type here to the new await function here, so chat room. So we collect the message uh, from the group. And then what we do is we just send it out. So self.send, and then we just format the message, json.dumps, and then we send it in this key value. So message equals whatever the message is inside of it. So remember that this message originates from, originally from the user typing in something into the chat room. So now what we got is that this message is now gonna be sent to that group, that chat room group. So going back to our scenario here, user has sent a message or created a message. That's gonna to go to the consumer, the consumer we've just written. And now that's gonna send back to the group. So now we're gonna to need to go back into the chat room and obviously we need to deal with the reply that's been returned. So if we move down here, we've got the on message. So we can utilize this. So let's just remind ourselves again, so the text area. So we want to place the new message in the text area box. So it's called chat text. So let's go down here again. So we've received a message. So we're gonna utilize this function here and we're just gonna expand it here. So this is now going to say a query selector. And then obviously the query selector we're using is chat box or sorry, chat text. We want to place the message in there and then we're going to include a value so we want to add a value to it so that value if you remember just scroll across a little bit is going to be um, the data so we return the data from the response remember so we get the chat um, on message so chat socket that's our connection on the message 
we then get the data, we parse the data, JSON parse the data into this variable called data. So the return data is now in data. So we look inside of data and this time, not tester, but we're looking for the data called message because that's what we send back. So this is just a new line that we're creating. So the idea here is that we're going to have a text box, a text field text box that's going to add new data into different lines. So there we go. So we now return the data and we put the value inside of the text area here. So I guess we now should have a go to see if this works. So the server is turned on. So let's go back into our browser. OK, so I made a few changes to the front end. So let me just quickly show you that just to add some style. Bring that back in. OK, so you can see. Oh, here you can see here um, up the top here, I've just added some bootstrap here. So we've just got a container a new row. I'm using deflex to justify the content in the center, specifying the size or the width of this container, which is going to hold the form. Inside of the form is just the form that we we're using before. So just make sure you've got the right ID. So ID uh, chat text input and the submit. And you can see that all the rest here is just uh, bootstrap stuff. So I just added a little bit of styling there just to make it look uh, functional. So this is what we're looking at now. So everything is turned on again. So I can then just go to any room I want. So let's just go to the JavaScript room or the uh, Django room. Go to this chat room. So here we are. Notice it starts off with undefined. Um, we can sort that out another time, but uh, let's just send a message. And there we go. So the message now is being placed inside of our chat room box. So the last test, I guess, is to open up a new tab here, go to the actual page. Obviously, it can't see anything yet. Um, but if I were to now type something here, hello, I am user two and press send in our first tab here, it now says and receives the message. So hello, I am user one. I send it there and go back to the other tab here and you can see that that's what's been received. So we have a functional chat room an asynchronous application that is working over multiple users. So you can imagine from this point, it's just about tidying up things and adding new functionality. So let's just go ahead now and just remove this hello user item here. And in addition to that, I'm just going to change this. I'm just going to remove this item as well in line 62. So we're not going to need that hello anymore. And then I just go to the consumer and up the top here, I'm just going to remove that functionality that we placed originally. So that was this item here and then the tester message. So I'm just going to get rid of this uh, function here and also the function here, this await here. So that just brings me back to this. So that should work okay now. So notice that we don't have the, we don't have the undefined anymore and that's not something that is appearing. So that removes that and the functionality seems okay. So let's go ahead and add the username before the actual message so that we can identify who is actually sending the message. So let's head back into the code. So similar to what we did previously in the chat room where we collected um, data from Django and then we added that into a, a JSON script, we're going to do the same thing for the user. So here we're going to um, get the user username. So assuming that the user is logged in, we're going to get the username and we're going to put utilize the JSON script uh, to add that data in and create a, um, a usable piece of data that we can collect in Java script and utilize to send across. So with that in place, let's now go into the, the JavaScript here and let's collect that piece of information. So this is what we did previously. So what we need to do now is obviously the same type of thing, um, except for it's now obviously called something slightly different. Um, and that is the username. So we called it username. So that data now is being passed across and we can now utilize it in JavaScript. So let's just move that to the top. Okay. So now we have the data of the user name, um, available in this new variable called user username. So now what we need to do is send that across as well as the message. 
So if you head back into the the send, what we're actually sending. So remember, we're sending the message at the moment. So obviously, what we need to do is just expand this. So we call this user um, or yeah, user username, and then we send that to. So we call that username. So we're going to send two pieces of information. Obviously, oh, sorry, user username. Um, that's what the data is referred to. That's the variable that's storing the data. So now what we've done is we passed the username of the user from Django to JavaScript variable, and now we're going to pass it and send it across so that everyone else can see who sent the message. So back in our consumer, we need to now handle this data. So that's pretty simple because we're just extending. So here, for example, uh, we've got the message. So we received the message right here. So what we also need to do then is just add to this. So for example, the user is going to be um, whatever we set the user as, the user data as. So the user data was referred to um, by username. So let's go back in the consumer. So the username, we'll call that username as well then. Okay, so now we collected the data. So now obviously we need to um, send to the group. So here we've got uh, the username. So Username um, equals the username data. So now we pass that across. And then down here, we're just going to do the same again. Um, so we then pass it across so we can then send it. So we capture the event. Uh, so here we've got the username event and then username. And then, of course, we just send it across. OK, so which is just this here. So we can just copy this down. There we go. So now we sent across the username as well. OK, so finally, then we just need to go back into remember, this is called username. We just need to go back into the chat room and where we display the message. We just need to also add the username. So at the moment, we're just outputting the message. So let's go ahead and add the username. Um, that's the data. So inside the data, we should have username. And then we want to plus and add that to the uh, the data message. So we probably want to add a space or a, a colon like that. Um, so we're going to have username, colon, then the data message. So I press save there. Let's go back into the page, send a message. And let's, well, let's just go back to a new channel. And then press that, press send. And then, of course, we've got a problem. OK, so um, let's just make sure that the server is running. So run the server. Seems to be OK. So just double check that. The data username seems to be OK. So let's go back in, refresh the page. And let's just create a new chat channel. No, we seem to have a problem. We don't have any messages at all now. So let's go back in. So if you look here, what's happening is that it doesn't look as though we're actually building um, our socket. So there's obviously a problem here, building the socket, the web socket. So um, we're just going to look at some of the syntax. We've got username being passed in, um, but it doesn't seem to be making a WebSocket. OK, so just troubleshooting that piece of code. I think I forgot to concatenate um, the data message again. That was the problem. Um, I've also just removed the um, the user data here. Um, that seemed to be the problem. Uh, so let's go back into the code. And you can now see that when I type it also the actual user appears. So let's just open up a new tab and let's just see that in action. So let's go back to the tab, type something in, press send. And you can now see it says to the other user who's actually typed it in. Now this user uh, should be logged in also as admin because I'm on the same um, tab here in the same browser. And of course I'm logged in. So let's just uh, go into an incognito tab. So you can see here that because the user isn't logged in, we're just uh, receiving a message or the, the user isn't being shown there. And of course, uh, when we go back into the original tab here, 
you can also see that that's the case and you can now see obviously the admins working okay so there we go so hopefully you now have a working application um, an asynchronous uh, application working a chat room and hopefully i've gone through the steps slowly enough in a way and i've given you enough detail to now start thinking well this is fairly simple this is fairly simple to extend so that last task where we added the user data i just wanted to show you how to extend because i guess that's the next step it's okay following a tutorial um, but if you don't know how to extend and add to it then it's you just follow the tutorial so that's obviously the next step you want to now potentially play and utilize and see what you can do with the code so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, hopefully I've given you enough information here to get started using uh, channels and asynchronous communication within your applications. Uh, we will revisit this most definitely because we want to add a few more functionality to this so we can add a database backend so we can start saving information because one of the problems we've got here, for example, is that when we actually go back into the room, obviously all the messages are, have disappeared. We could start thinking about utilizing sessions um, with channels, for example. That's another thing that we could look at. Um, but you can really start to see here potentially um, the value of utilizing this type of technology. There's numerous different things I can think of that we could use to implement into numerous of projects that you might want to complete. So thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.